If you guys know me, you know that I'm a diehard Mizzou fan. I grew up watching the Tigers during the Gary Pinkle era, and some of my first memories as a kid were watching Mizzou games. I still clearly remember their game against Kansas in 2007, their upset victory over number one Oklahoma, and their back-to-back -back SEC championship appearances. This has made me a Mizzou fan for life, and while I'm not as emotionally attached as I used to be, I still find myself always rooting for the Tigers and following everything they do. I know a lot about college football, but I especially know a lot about Mizzou football, and if there's one word I can use to describe the program over the last eight years, it's mediocre. Ever since Gary Pinkle got sick in 2015, the Tigers just have not been the same. They don't win bowl games, they haven't had a lot of superstar level players, they don't win big games, they always find ridiculous ways to blow games, and they just don't have that same flash that they used to have. In today's video, I want to talk about why that has happened. We're going to go through what has happened to Mizzou football over the last seven to eight years, why I'm starting to really question the Drinkman's hire, and then I'm also going to preview the 2023 team and talk about why I'm still optimistic. But before we get started, be sure to leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new and love college football content, and let me know what team I should cover in my next video. Now let's get started and talk about Mizzou football. Going back in time, Mizzou football has always been my school, and one thing I always remembered about the Gary Pinkle era was their ability to produce quarterbacks and defensive linemen. It seemed every single year Mizzou was putting out a first-run NFL draft at the defensive line spot, and they were also always having a solid three-year quarterback, and there wasn't a whole lot of question marks at that spot. You had guys like Brad Smith, Chase Daniel, Blaine Gabbert, James Franklin, Matty Mock, and most recently Drew Locke. Most schools have quarterback problems, but Mizzou really didn't have that under Gary Pinkle. He ended up retiring in 2015, and while that was a disastrous year for Drew Locke, he got a chance to learn a lot, make a lot of mistakes, and he really improved over his next three seasons, including breaking the single-season touchdown record in the SEC. That was later beaten out by Joe Burrow, but the quarterback position was not a problem for Mizzou. He also had plenty of insane defensive linemen, as just off the top of my head, they had first round picks in Ziggy Hood, Shane Ray, Charles Harris, Justin Smith, Alden Smith, and Sheldon Richardson. There are plenty more guys who went in the later rounds too, but Mizzou always had good pass rushers, always had good linemen, and always had good quarterback play. They were also always able to take two star players and make them into good starters, but that has just not been happening over the last few years. When Barry Odom was hired for the 2016 season, I was very skeptical. In my opinion, he wasn't a brilliant young mind or a great recruiter, so I was very worried how he was going to do, but I did trust the process because Pinkle was not highly graded when he was hired. The Odom era ended up becoming really mediocre, and in my opinion, would have been a lot worse if they didn't have Drew Locke. Mizzou consistently was not able to beat ranked teams, always disappointed the fans at home, didn't make bowl games, and whiffed on pretty much every major in-state recruit. Odom wasn't a bad coach though, and when Josh Heupel was the offensive coordinator, they were exciting to watch. He just couldn't put it all together though. That's why in 2020, I was really excited for the Drinkwitz era. He was a brilliant young offensive mind, was one of the younger head coaches in the country, and had that charisma that won over recruits and got people talking about Mizzou football. He immediately brought with him a ton of hype and started landing big time recruits. In my opinion, the biggest moment of the Drinkwitz era was in October of 2020 when they upset LSU. At the time, the win looked a lot bigger than it does now because LSU actually wasn't very good, but in that game, they came back, beat a ranked team, and stopped them four times on the goal line to get the first major win of the Drinkwitz era. It looked like things were on the up, as they had the SEC Freshman of the Year in Connor Basilak and a loaded 2021 recruiting class. This is widely seen as one of the best classes in Mizzou history as they signed Travion Ford, Dominic Lovett, Tyler Macon, Jadarius Perkins, Connor Tolleson, Kyron Montgomery, and Dalen Carnell. Those guys were all listed as four-star recruits somewhere, but unfortunately, a lot of them have already whiffed. Ford, Lovett, Macon, and Perkins have all transferred, and Perkins ended up spurning them before the season started, but basically, their top four guys are already gone, Connor Tolleson hasn't played that great so far, and Kyron Montgomery has not seen the field. The two players who actually contributed were Dominic Lovett and Dalen Carnell, but Lovett decided to leave for Georgia. The 2021 season was also extremely disappointing in my eyes, as they had a lot of dumb losses, and players just weren't developing, and there was definitely problems at the quarterback spot. Eventually, Connor Bazelak was run out of town, and after that bowl game loss to Army, we weren't quite sure what we were getting out of Brady Cook either. Basically, Cook was the same player as Bazelak in 2022, and Mizzou had some really dumb losses. The Auburn game is probably one of the dumbest losses in college football history, as they had three chances to win it, and somehow made a meteoric mistake and lost each one of them. 
They got the tar kick out of them in week two against Kansas State, had a ridiculously stupid block punt penalty call against Kentucky, which ultimately put the nail in the coffin for the game, and then they completely blew it against Georgia. Had Mizzou taken care of business and upset the Bulldogs, the season probably would have looked a lot different, but the narrative stayed the same. Mizzou couldn't beat the top teams, they shot themselves in the foot, and they weren't getting a lot of player development. One of the lone bright spots of the 2022 season was the emergence of Dominic Lovett as he became one of the top receivers in the country, but as I said, he's now gone to Georgia. Because the 2022 class was all freshmen, there wasn't a whole lot of expectation for anyone outside of Luther Burden, but now those guys are, are gonna have to show their money's worth. Mizzou's 2022 class was the best in school history, as as I said, they signed five-star recruit Luther Burden, they grabbed one of the top quarterbacks in the country in Sam Horn, grabbed two four-star defensive linemen in Marquise Graciel and DJ Weselek, and then grabbed two four-star playmakers in Tavoris Jones and Jamarian Wayne, and two four-star secondary players in Marcus Scott and Isaac Thompson. Out of all of those guys, the only one who really did anything as a freshman was Burden, but he was also the only one who really had any expectation. Right now, the two guys who, in my opinion, really need to step it up from last year's class this year are Sam Horn and Tavoris Jones. Tyler Beatty was an anomaly as he carried that offense in 2021. And while I respect the Cody Schrader, Nathaniel, Pete backfield, I don't think that's what's going to get Mizzou over the hump. And I'd like to see Tavoris Jones live up to being the number 13 running back in his class. After that, there's going to be a lot of expectation on Sam Horn. He's one of the most highly recruited quarterbacks in Mizzou history, and coming out of Georgia, Horn has had an unbelievable amount of hype. Last year, we barely got to see him, but as of right now, he's still nursing an injury he suffered in baseball, and I'm not quite sure he's going to be the starter. Horn is not a player that Drinkwitz can afford to whiff on, and the quarterback spot still really concerns me for 2023. Right now, it's technically a three-man battle, but there are four options, as they have returning starter Brady Cook, Miami transfer Jake Garcia, redshirt freshman Sam Horn, and true freshman Jabari Johnson. Mizzou's 2023 class also has a couple of blue chip players that are really going to need to pan out. They signed one of the best tight ends in the country in Brett Norfleet, signed four-star wide receiver Joshua Manning, four-star safety Marvin Burks, four-star quarterback Jabari Johnson, four-star offensive tackle Logan Reichert, and then one of the fastest athletes in the country right now and three-star receiver Marquise Johnson. I think Mizzou actually found a good amount of diamonds in the rough in this class, and some of them will have a chance to play right away. In terms of the transfer portal, I also like some of the guys they got. They brought in two edge rushers in Niles Gaddy and Austin Firestone, grabbed two big-time offensive linemen in Marcellus and Cameron Johnson, grabbed four-star quarterback Jake Garcia, and then two wide receivers and former five-star Oklahoma wide receiver Theo Weiss and former four-star Ole Miss receiver Dennis Jackson. I'm personally really excited for all these players, but Mizzou has got to figure it out. Elijah Drinkwitz, in my opinion, is running out of time, as he's 0-2 in bowl games, has yet to go over 500, and the fan base is quickly getting impatient with him. While Mizzou has been very mediocre to this point, I think this year's team really could be a difference maker. It's honestly going to start on the defensive end. Despite losing Isaiah McGuire and Trajan Jeffcoat, Mizzou returned so much defensive talent that they could arguably have a top three defense in the SEC. They bring back Jalen Carlisle, Tyrone Hopper, Chad Bailey, Joe Charleston, Chris abrams Drain, Ennis Rakestraw, Darius Robinson, and Dalen Carnell. All of those guys actually could be NFL draft picks, and they already had a top 40 defense last year, so honestly, Mizzou's defense is going to be the foundation of this team and is what is going to give them the edge. The second key is going to be the offense. Right now, I have no idea who's going to win this quarterback job, but what I do know is if Brady Cook wins it, the fan base is going to lose their mind. I'm not necessarily saying it's a good or a bad thing, but in most Mizzou fans' eyes, they already saw what they had in him last year. Why not play one of the three four-stars you have? Ultimately, I'm not Kirby Moore, their new offensive coordinator, so I can't make that decision, but I would like to see Sam Horn be the guy. At running back, I sort of already touched on it, but they'll bring back their extra year running backs in Cody Schrader and Nathaniel Pete, and I sort of buy into the same mindset that I see those guys as second and third options and really hope that four-star running back Tavoris Jones or true freshman Jamal Roberts ends up becoming the guy. At wide receiver, you lost Dominic Lovett and Barrett Bannister, but they're still going to return Luther Burden and Mookie Cooper, who should be their top two options. And then you're probably going to see Theo Weiss and Dennis Jackson take over, and Makai Miller should take that second step. Redshirt freshman Jamarion Wayne should play a little bit more, and true freshman Joshua Manning and Daniel Blood should also get a chance to see the field. One of the big question marks about Mizzou's roster has been the tight end spot and how disappointing that has been, and hopefully Brett Norfleet can take that step in year one. Mizzou's offensive line isn't going to be near the top of the SEC, but they shouldn't be the worst either. 
I think they're a middle of the pack squad. And with a new offensive line coach, we'll see if things can turn around. Right now, there are a lot more question marks on offense as we don't really know who the starting quarterback is going to be or what we're going to get out of the running game. But let's turn it over to their schedule now. In weeks one and two, they play against South Dakota and Middle Tennessee State, and those two have to be wins. If you lose one of them, you've already lost the program and the season's pretty much done. After that, they get Kansas State in week three, who will likely be a ranked team. This is also somewhat of a rivalry matchup, and this is a home game that Mizzou absolutely has to win. If it was 2021 or 2022, I'd say Drinkwitz could get by by not winning it, but he has to win that in year four if he wants to get over the hump. In my opinion, I think the game will be close, but I'm gonna have to go with Kansas State for now, bringing them a two and one. After that, they get Memphis and St. Louis, and in my opinion, that is going to be a win. After that, they'll go on the road to Vanderbilt, and while Clark Lee is building something special and typically gives Mizzou fits, I still think Mizzou is the more talented team, and that'll bring Mizzou to a 4-1 record. This will be the pivotal moment of the 2023 season. They'll get LSU at home, who will probably be a top 10 team at that time, and this will be their first real test to see if they can compete with the big boys and have that sort of magical season. Right now, I think it'd be foolish for you to pick Mizzou to win that game, but I do think it'll be closer than people think. I'm going to chalk that in as a loss, but that could be a major turning point for Mizzou football and the season if they can somehow pull that one off. After that, they go on the road to Kentucky, and Mizzou honestly has been cursed against them over the last six years, so I'm going to go ahead and pick Kentucky to win that one, giving them their third loss of the year and dropping them to 4-3. and three. From there, I'm going to give them a little bit of slack, as I think they're going to take care of South Carolina at home, and then they're going to have a road loss to Georgia. That'll put them at 5-4 and four for their last three games. These three games are going to determine the future for Drink and this season. They get Tennessee at home, who in my opinion is a little bit overhyped right now. They get Tennessee at home, which I think is a winnable game. I actually really like Tennessee football. And while I think they have a ridiculous amount of potential, I'm not sure how they're going to be in mid-November. And right now, all we have is hype. I think Mizzou's going to take care of Tennessee at home in this one and get themselves to 6-4. and four. After that, they get Florida at home. And for the most part, they've actually played the Gators really well. So I'm going to say they carry on the momentum from that Tennessee game and beat Florida. That'll put them at 7-4 and four for a road victory against Arkansas. Somehow, Mizzou always seems to squeak one out in close games against the Razorbacks, but with this being at Arkansas and being both KJ Jefferson and Rocket Sanders' probable last home game, I'm going to say Arkansas takes this one in a nail-biter, and that leaves Mizzou with a 7-5 record. Obviously, there are a lot of games that could go either way, but in my opinion, Mizzou's going to end up winning 7 games in 2023. Will that be enough to keep Elijah Drinkwitz's job? Honestly, I think it's going to depend how they play in their losses and how they do in their bowl game. A 7-5 team should end up making a pretty decent bowl, and if they can win that, that'll get them to 8 wins, and I think secure Drinkwitz's job. If Mizzou ends up going 7-6 or 6-7, then I think it'll be a judgment call about Drinkwitz, and if he misses the bowl game, he's done. Either way, I'm still somewhat optimistic for this year's team, as they're going to have a load of defense, have a lot of potential in their skill guys, hopefully have learned from their foolishness and a lot of dumb losses over the last two years. Either way, I'm just a fan though, and I don't get to watch practice every day, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. But if you're a Mizzou fan, what do you think? What do you think of this year's team? What do you think about my thoughts on the program? And what are your expectations for this year? Be sure to let me know down below, leave a like if you want to support today's video, let me know what team I should cover next, and check out all my other videos on the end screen, including my video about Mizzou's 2023 quarterback battle. Hope to see you guys again soon, and until next time, peace.